Oh, if you thought summer 2021 was hotter than ever, you would be correct. In the U.S. and other locations around the world tied or broke heat records. It was also another year of extreme weather events. Joining us to talk more about this is Jared Rennie. He is the research meteorologist with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or more commonly known as NOAA. Good morning, Jared. Thank you so much for being with us. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, it is, you know, what I'm thinking about heat. Uh, we always think about summer here in Texas, but we had a very, we had the warmest recorded December, the, the warmest December on record here in Austin. Yeah, that's correct. And, you know, throughout the year in Texas, you know, there was the extreme cold in, in February. And then later on in the year, it was one of the warmest summers on record in the U.S. and one of the warmest Decembers on record. And as a result, globally, we stand at about the sixth warmest uh, on record. How do changing global temperatures impact these extremes? Yeah, so there's a common misconception that, you know, global climate change is a future problem, it's a polar bear problem, but unfortunately it is a here and now problem. So the obvious one is warmer temperatures, you know, like I just said, the warmest summer on record, the warmest December on record, but there's other impacts of warmer temperatures as well. It can lead to more intense drought, like we're seeing in the western part of the U.S. Uh, it can lead to uh, intense precipitation events, um, including certain hurricanes, tropical systems that kind of came through the area. One of the most prominent ones was Hurricane Ida last year, which dumped a lot of rainfall from Louisiana all the way to New York City. So there are certainly a lot of impacts. At NASA, and, and we're looking at some images right now from NASA, the agency recently launching Landsat 9, working with NOAA to launch its ghost satellite this year. Uh, talk a little more about these satellites and how it'll help uh, the public at large understand climate, understand the weather. Yeah, I'm a data scientist by heart, so I love seeing all these images that you're posting here. So, you know, over the past 30 years, NASA and NOAA have launched all these different satellites, and essentially they just have cameras on it, and they just look down on the Earth, and they look at many different things. So one of the common things that you see is obviously the clouds, which is what you can see on your local weather report. Uh, but we look at many different other things as well, including temperature, precipitation, uh, uh, dust in the atmosphere, certain sea ice concentrations up in the Arctic and Antarctic. And these are things that we weren't able to see 30 to 50 years ago. So it just kind of creates this sort of big data mine, this sort of playground for all of us scientists to kind of go in and play with the data. And we use that to not only predict the weather over the next seven to 10 days, but we can also sort of monitor what the climate has been doing over the past 30 years. Uh, will this data also uh, help determine uh, what will happen in terms of future events, uh, uh, global big events, big extremes such as we saw? Yeah. So, again, we, you know, to look to the future, we can look in the past as well. So we have all this data for the past 30 years and we can kind of use that to get give us sort of a best guess as to what's going to happen in the future. In fact, Noah, you know, we're saying that there's about a 99 percent chance that 2022 is going to be one of the you know, top 10 years on record along with 2021. And we're already seeing that globally in places like Australia, where they're seeing some really high temperatures here in January. It's just incredible what's happening on planet Earth and, and what will continue to happen in the next few decades or century. Uh, and Jared, if our viewers would like more information, where should they go? Yeah, you already have the links on there. There's climate.nasa.gov, there's gis.nasa.gov, that's G-I-S-S. -S. Um, also, from the NOAA side, you can just do a search for NOAA State of the Climate. You can get a lot of uh, information down into the local uh, level, including some really cool maps and charts that are all publicly available for anyone to look at. This is fascinating. It really is to see what's happening uh, in our atmosphere. Jared, thank you so much for joining us today. Again, thank you for having me.